All right, we are live. Brand new episode, Sprint Ride Option Podcast. I am Andrew Pasquini. Jason Aponte to my right. And as you can see, we have Jaquaski Tart, safety for the San Francisco 49ers on with us today. How are you doing today, Jaquaski? I'm good, man. How y'all doing? Good, Kwaski, man. Thank you for joining us. We know your time is valuable and everything. So um, real for, real quick quick question. How's your how's your rehab going on the toe, man? How's everything feeling? Uh, it's, it's going well, man. I actually right on schedule. So, I mean, for me, I just looked at it was 16 weeks left until the until camp starts. So I'm all lasered in on that. We saw that tweet. That's what we were thinking, too. We were like, man, look at this guy. He's ready to go for camp. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you're, you're ready to go for camp. Uh, you just signed the one year deal with the 49ers. How uh, how are you feeling to be back with the uh, 49ers? Uh, man, it's, it's a it's a blessing, man, just being able to be back with the guys, man. Uh, it's a, a wonderful brotherhood, just, you know, being there and, you know, just to be back one more year is, I mean, it's, it's very, it's very much a blessing. Awesome, man. And, you know, I think, you know, for, for the fan base, we're excited to have you back, you know, because we really understand what you bring to this team. We understand your, your smarts and your IQ and everything as well. So, you know, uh, this was your first time. Was this your first time really on the open market as far as free agency goes? Or was it was there a time that you had before? Uh, no, this was my first time, actually. Okay. Just, you know, so what, what was that like? Talk to me about, you know, what that was like to <laughs> be on the open market, have other teams come to you. Uh, I mean, you... It's it's very stressing because the situation that I was in, you know, I, I know my durability was always a question. So, you know, it was it was a very stressing thing just knowing like, OK, will I get my word for or, or will I not? So, I mean, I just had to narrow it down. I had to narrow it down to what team, you know, I can play for again that put me in the best position to play, play well. And in San Francisco, that was an easy. That was just an easy, uh, easy decision to make. Hard oh, but awesome. easy. <laughs> um, and, and actually, going into that, the, the decision, um, kind of a two part. How much of the culture that John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan have with the 49ers impact your decision to return? And how much of being able to play another year with Jimmy Ward uh, led into coming back to the 49ers as well? A lot, man. You know, uh, when, when John, and, John and Kyle got there, they changed the culture around so much tremendously. And, uh, just give credit to those guys, just the winning culture, everybody that's there, they want to win. They want to like a hard worker. Everybody has that one common goal. And, you know, not too many people have an ego or worry too much about themselves. They, a lot of guys really put the team first. And um, for me and Jimmy, I mean, it's one of our things where we, you know, we looked at like, man, we get to play together. We should be like the top safe, top two safeties that play in the league every year. And, you know, for us, the injury's kind of been in the way for us. But, I mean, at this point, we're looking past that, and we got an opportunity to do that this upcoming season. You led me to that perfect question because that's what I was just about to ask you. Is Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski Tart the best safety duo in the NFL? We're going we're gonna to let y'all see this year, man. We're going to let everybody decide after this season. That's what's up, man. Uh, that, exactly. That, that's the best way to answer that one. Um, you, you talk about the durability issues, and, and we, we we see the media and fans being excited about a 17-game season. What, as a player, what what's your view on the, the 17th game, not getting the extra bye week, all that stuff? What's, what's the player's side of that? That's tough, man. You know, uh, I would have thought we could have squeezed out a second bye week. Uh, bye weeks are very helpful for the body. But, uh, I mean... We just got to try to do the best we can. I mean, that's something I wasn't – I mean, I really – I wasn't – no one to get too much into it, but I really wasn't a fan of the new CBA. So, I mean, but you got to, you know, you got to deal with it. But, I yeah, mean, I mean, that's 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 funny to me, man, because they talk about player safety, right? And, I, and and that always worries me about, like, how can you add on another game and now not a second bye week? And then also the the idea that nine away games, eight home games, that's it's just 16 seem perfect, eight and eight and a bye week and everything. That seemed perfect. I don't right. understand, you know, why why mess with that at this point is my is the way I'm looking at it. Uh, you know what make the worlds go wrong, man. Yes, you know, it. I, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, just as that. I mean, for us as players, though, I mean, I think a lot of players. I mean, I guess that's why we we all make it there. We learn how to adapt. So for us, we just gonna have to adapt to it, and you know, try to do the best we can. Yep. 
Um, I, I, I want, I want to get this question just cause I asked it before. Um, and, and it, it's amazing to me, your Wikipedia, it says you started playing football your senior year of high school. Yeah. Um, so what's that like? And, and at what point did you realize that? Yeah, this is what I'm going to do for the next 20 years of my life at, I don't know, top level skill wise. What, what, when did you realize that football was your sport instead of basketball? Uh, I, I actually realized that in college. I mean, it was a point in time where, where I redshirted my freshman year in college, and I was just like, oh, nah, football, not for me. I'm I'm about to go back to basketball. And, you know, I mean, honestly, I was surprised I even, you know, went off to to sign with to sign with uh, Sanford to play football. Uh, a lot of people back in my own town, they'll see me when I came back from school. It was like, oh, where, where are you playing basketball at, you know? So – I mean, it was stuff like that going on and just red shirt. And I'm like, man, I need to be playing basketball. But then you got a lot of people who talk me into, you know, hey, man, you need to stick with football. You need to stick with football. It's okay to red shirt. So for me, like my process was, I mean, my, my thought process was, you know, if I go to a small school and play football, I have to start all four years. I got to start all four years to even get a chance to make some NFL. So, so, so I me- actually. Good. Hmm? No, you good. Yeah, so when I actually, you know, signed with Sanford and they redshirted me, I was like, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and, you know, get a degree and, and try to, you know, do the best I can in life. Uh, and I hit up Jimmy, actually, when I redshirted, I'm like, hey, man, hey, you going to make it to the league? I know you are. You got the talent. But, you know, I'm going to just probably get my job and, and, and do that. He was like, what? You tripping? I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, no, I ain't. I'm like, bro, you you playing as a freshman. I'm not. Like, it just, that dream is, like, for me, I try to be realistic as possible in any situation. So, for me, like, was realistic. Like, okay, well, I need four years to play at a small school to show my talent. And when I finally started as a as a redshirt freshman, I had a, I had a good year. It was just my sophomore year where I just, like, I caught on the football so much more, and right. like I, I think I finished that year with like five interceptions, and like led the team in tackles. I had a I had a great year that year, so it was I was really in position to lead as a redshirt sophomore. Right. So let me ask you something. Let me ask you something, Kwaski. What position in basketball does uh, Jaquaski Tart play? Is he is he a point guard? Is he a shooting guard? <laughs> it, you know, it, what is it? Point guard. Point guard. All right. So you got yeah. you got the handles and everything you just setting everybody up. So you know what's funny about that is that kind of ties into, you know, your your football IQ. So, you know, I wrote an article on you, you know, that's on 49ers Goldmine, but I pointed out a, a few a few things on film that you see, right? You you understand the concept and you alert someone else to it, right? The Fred Warner yeah. interception against the Giants, the Akella Weatherspoon almost interception, you know, against Cincinnati. Talk to me about your preparation and as far as when you're watching film what makes it so easy to understand what you're seeing? Because, you know, people always point out the thing about, hey, he doesn't get turnovers, but you're causing turnovers with your mind because of what you see on the field. Just talk to me a little bit about your preparation when you're watching other people. Uh, For me, just watching film, like you you get a ton of of different breakdowns, first down, uh, first and 10, like the the first play they run, every first play of the game, uh, third downs, like, just a lot of obvious stuff and for me I just like I it's plenty of guys who who do the same thing like and most most of the times throughout the week you know you see the same repetitive stuff that show up and and once you see it show up a lot you're like okay they for sure you gotta you gotta take a few plays into that game like I know I'm gonna see this play you know so a lot of times too teams when they play us for some reason like a run, like a run play would be like 100% run on this play, this down and distance, in this formation. When they play us, they'll change it. It'll be, they'll come out with a pass on that play. So it's just like, you got to kind of be cautious of that too. But, I mean, far as far as film goes, like, you just got to try to look at things that, that stand out. And then, awesome. like, going back to that Carolina play in 2017, mm-hmm. uh one thing with that offense they were doing, they, you know, they would come out in 21 personnel to, you know, to. This is the pick you're really, talking about, right? Yeah. All right, so let me pull it up. Let me pull it up on the screen real quick so you can just talk yeah. people through it real fast. I got you. I'm going to show I'm going to show it real quick. So this is the play we're talking about. Everybody sees that, right? 
All right, so so start over. Um, Kwaski, talk to me about you know what you're looking at here in the beginning. Uh, first off, you got to look at the fact that they're on a logo area. Everybody knows from from high school, college to NFL that logo area. You know the offense going to try to take a shot. And then not only that, they give it away with, you know, it's Carolina, 21 personnel. They they not running the ball out of that personnel. So, you know, they going deep. So, okay. on that play, I was just, I this was really, you. yeah, I say, yeah. So, I was already kind of, I was already leaning towards like, okay, let me be a lot slower. Play action should come. If not, just still play it slower. And for me, reading the QB, I like to read the QB drop on on uh, on that free safety. So I kinda like you if you read if you're able to read the QB drop what's up? My son Mason. But uh <laughs> you could <laughs> but uh look at that man. That's crazy. And and it's crazy because right here it looks like you just you already know the spot that you need to get to. Like you just turn and you're just you're already headed there. You know where the ball's going. And for you to be able to jump up like that and then make the pick. That that but that none of that is possible if you don't know what you're looking at, you know, or if you don't know what's coming. So again, it really just speaks to your acumen and your IQ, honestly. Um, still one of the, the the coolest plays ever, man. Yeah, I mean, just letting the QB take you there. My my threat was actually to uh the tight end. Mm-hmm. So I had to be like cautious of him, just knowing like, okay, my threat is the tight end, Olsen. Mm-hmm. But again, Olsen, right just, here, right? Yeah, and then watching the QB mannerisms tape with Cam, like you know when he, you know when he throwing a ball and when he not throwing a ball. So usually with most quarterbacks, wherever wherever they pump fake, they're gonna throw the opposite way. So it's just all about being disciplined. For me, I kind of like that help you narrow the game down to you know help you get closer to making those uh, turnovers. That's crazy. I mean, that, like just the preparation and understanding what you're seeing, like that's just insane, man, honestly. And I don't think that I think that's something that nobody realizes when you're out there. You know, like I spoke to it about, you know, the Warner interception, like those are things that you're calling out because of what you've seen. And and even, you know, in the press conference, Fred, Fred is like, yeah, you yeah. know, Kwaski called that out. You know, he wasn't trying to make it seem like he understood. He's like, Kwaski called it out. And then, you know what I noticed, too, when I watched it? You know, you get the interception, then then I look at you, and you're like, you're hyped, like you got your arms up because yeah. you know what you called. So I mean, that's gotta be that's right. gotta be a great feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's a great feeling, man. Then a guy like Fred, man, he's he's smart as hell too. He be work, he stay working his ass off, like he everything that's coming his way, he deserves. And again, like that play, like for him to even do that, like you can tell a guy a million times, sometimes like, okay, hey, I, I, this coming. And, you know, sometimes he may not get there, but Fred, he actually did it and got there. So I was just like, oh shit. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, it was a, it was a, a fun moment to enjoy. That's um, awesome, man. Another play that really stands out uh, from you. And I know we don't have a ton of time left. Um, another play that stands out that you made uh, the play last uh, 2019 Seattle, the, uh, uh, we uh, the Monday night game, the forced fumble right before halftime. Right. Um, what does that do for a defense? Because you know Seattle, very good offense, very good team. Uh, you know, moving down the field right before halftime, you force the turnover. Does that change things? Is the feel of a team going into the half? Uh, is there actually like we talk about the the feel of momentum swaying one way? Yeah, is, is that a real thing? And especially in that play, what does that do to? Oh the yeah, for sure. I mean, energy is everything. Everybody feel it. Like you feel the energy just watching the game. So um, it was a huge momentum play, like going into the half, like because you know they could have easily been where they kick a field goal or score a touchdown even to to go up, and uh, so that was just a huge play by me, and I just you know. I was just trying to make a play, man. That's awesome, man. Um, so let me ask you a question. You've been here. This is about to be seventh year. I think you. I think you and Jimmy are the two. Are you the two longest tenured current 49ers, right? Like it's it's you guys. I would say uh, I want to. It's Jimmy Ward and Dante Johnson. Dante yeah. Johnson. That's Dante right. Dante Johnson is gonna. Yeah, they, yeah Dante. They both came. Dante Dante Johnson's gonna be on this roster every single year. It seems like forever, yeah. honestly. Um, I, but I love Dante, man. Shout out yeah. to Dante. <laughs> That's, yeah, Dante. definitely, That's definitely. Dog. But, but what's your favorite moment in the seven in the this coming into the seventh year that you've had as a 49er? That's a good question, man. Uh, uh, really, that Super Bowl week, man. Just you know, 
for us as as a group, as a team, just being there, like just knowing like all the work we put in, and to be, to be able to get to that stage together, and you know, compete to for a chance to win a championship. Like that, that was the best moment. Just knowing, like, okay, my first, my first three years, well, first two, you know, without Kyle and John, like how how hectic things were there. And you know, Kyle and John came in, they had a plan, and you know, just within the 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 third year, boom, we get there. Awesome. And so, so real quick, I just wanted to touch on something that you just said. So, you know, we understand how it was before Colin John got there. Like you said, there was a plan. Talk to me, like we talked about culture, but talk to me about the immediate difference that you noticed from, you know, who was there before to, to when they got there. Did you see an immediate switch or was it something that you had to, you know, you know, see little by little before you understood? Uh, it was, it was definitely an immediate switch, man. Just, you know, from from Kyle, the moment he walked in, it's like he don't have to command your attention, but he commanded. You know what I'm saying? He just one of them guys where he walk in the room, everybody, okay, he's in here. Like he just commands everybody's attention. He, I mean, he's very cool, calm, and collected as a as a person and as a coach. So I mean, that's something. I mean, you, I honestly though, you want to hear Kyle talk all day about football because when he's talking about football, he like. He's like, damn, I ain't even think of that. You know what I'm saying? It could be so so simple though, but it's just like that's just how Kyle is. He's so football minded. Um, la- last thing I have, uh, Demeco Ryan's has been there since 2017. He's he's getting his chance as the defensive coordinator this year. Uh, how excited are you to have him there? Uh, him being there for what four years now and finally getting his yeah. chance. I mean, it's it's very. I'm very excited about it. I mean, Nico, he's been working hard. He always been a guy, you know. Feel like everyone feel like he can do the job, and I'm I'm very very ready to you know go into the year with Demico as a DC. Awesome. So Andrew wants to ask this question, but I think this will be the last one, and we'll let you get out of here yeah. on this. Oh, is it is this my uh, how cool yeah. Yeah. of a feeling is it as a defense to not just t- force a turnover, but I feel like the f- the most fun thing to do in football it looks like is that eighty yard sprint to the other side, uh, the other end zone to do the pose with the, <laughs> the team, turnover, Sully, uh, with right. for the cameras. How cool is that? Because I think that's like the coolest thing you do in football. Man, it's 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 unbelievable, man. It's a, it's just a great feeling you get that turnover, and, and especially with the crowd as well. Like we could tell the people feel it, and I mean that's it's a very it's, it's just a momentum thing too as well. Like you get so much more adrenaline. It's like, man, you can be tired on a drive and you get that turnover. It's like you got so much more energy to run all the way down to, you know, to, to, pose, <laughs> to pose and take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So one more thing real quick before, because we're going to let you go. Thank you again, you know, Thank for your you. time and everything as well, too. But um, how much did you would you say that having no fans in the stadium affects like what you just talked about, that energy, right? Like that juice. Like is yeah. is this something that you you kind of had to bring for yourself and and you know did that did that in any way affect you guys last year? Uh no I wouldn't say it affected us. Just like I said, like for us, like we as a team, we understand we had to adapt to every whatever the case may be, we just gotta learn how, how to adapt. And for us, I mean it's at practice, you got to bring your own energy. The fans not there at practice. That's so, true. I mean, it's, it's more like a practice style where, I mean, I know Fred, he going to bring his energy. He's like a lot of guys who, you know, they come every day with that same energy they have in the game. So, it's like, you know, it's it's crucial. to I guess we all can feed off different players. But for sure, you got to have your mindset like, hey, I, I got to bring my own energy. And then it's, it's football. Right. So, it's, you know, you're playing football. All right, one more. This is the last one. I promise, Kwaski. I'm yeah, gonna let you get out of here. I want you to cast a national championship. <laughs> What's your expectations right now, even before the draft for the for this team this year? How do you guys feel? I feel like uh, you know, we gotta come in, work hard, and you know, um, and you know, we can we can get back to where we where we was at in twenty in the twenty nineteen and twenty twenty season. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely, well, man. Go ahead. Thank you very much, man. We really appreciate you carving out the time for us. Uh, really good. Good luck with the rest of the offseason. Obviously, good luck going into the uh, 2021 season. Hey, man, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. And thanks, Kwaski, man. I, pre- I appreciate you, man. And, and, you know, work on that foot, man. And can't wait to see you ball out this year, bro. I appreciate it, brother. All right, man. Yeah. Have Later. a great night. Whew. Wow, Andrew. So um, there we go. That's uh, Jaquaski Tart right there. Hey, uh, the man. Uh, 
well, once again, I, I know I said at the end there, we really appreciate appreciate having him on, uh, him taking the time out, you know, to talk to us. Uh, pretty cool. Pr- pretty yeah. cool. Just, just playing it simple. Pretty cool. Best moment so far um, on this podcast, hands down, oh. you know, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun, honestly, man. I, uh, you know, he's a cool guy, man. And, and, you know, I think that the fan base is starting to understand what he brings to the team as well. And that's, that's, you know, all I really try to do with, uh, with my articles or anything like that is just, you know, say what you want about, you know, injuries and things like that. But the man's super smart and he just, you know, yeah. he, he knows what he's doing, man. Like, like, you know, even that small part when we were just t- talking about that cam interception, man, he was just incredible, man. I mean, I mean, we, we mentioned it before the pod too, just kind of, Hey, this is what we're planning to do. He lit up when we said, Hey, we're going to, we're also going to go over some tape real quick. He, you can tell he loves the game. He, he, he knows the game. He's, he's smart. He, he I mean, I, I think I've said it on the pod before too. He, he's, you know, one of the reasons I came back to watching the four, I took a, I took a little bit of a hiatus, uh, seeing him come into the, you know, the franchise and the team brought me back personally. So, um, yeah, very, very cool. Having Jaquas guitar on, we really appreciate him coming on. Uh, we're going to change gears cause, uh, a move that kind of has to do with the San Francisco 49ers happened today. Yep. Uh, Sam Darnold is now a member of the Carolina Panthers, Um, And the reason that is relevant to the 49ers is that pretty much writes in that Zach Wilson is going to be the number two pick, which leaves the 49ers with Justin Fields, Trey Lance, or Mac Jones, if, you know, that's what you're into. Um, I don't know. What was your instant reaction to that trade, just from an NFL standpoint for the Panthers? And then I guess we can um, funnel into what this means for the 49ers. It's more really about what Carolina thinks about who they can get at their at their spot. They didn't, you know, they they felt like staying at eight wasn't going to allow them to get anybody that they wanted, whether that's Mac, whether that's whoever, you know. Which I don't think it's really Mac when you really look at how Carolina runs that spread offense. How could you want a pocket passer? You would really want somebody who can do a little bit more. You know, Sam Darnold's a pocket passer, but he can move. You know, Mac's not like that, so I don't see where he fits. That's why I never really understood the fit with Carolina. He's not a pocket passer. They run a spread offense. Um, but I think it really just says to, okay, we don't know where we're going to get. We don't know which of these guys we're going to get or who's going to be around. Remember Kyle talked about being left at the altar. Well, yeah. Carolina wasn't trying to get left at the altar. You pick up a quarterback at 24, uh, at 24 years old, and he's going to be relatively cheap for two years. And this offense has weapons. They they have a, a, a great mind. And Joe Brady, I, I think this is a great move for them as well, too. So, you know, you pick up his fifth. This year, he's cheap. Next year, he's still relatively cheap in terms of starting quarterbacks. And if you unlock what you can from him, then it makes total sense. Um, so I, I really like the move for them. I, I thought it was pretty interesting uh, that they instantly locked in that uh, fifth man option or fifth, fifth man, fifth year option, but talking basketball now, uh, that, that fifth year option right away. Maybe that was part of the deal, uh, kind of ensuring him that he's, he's going to be the starting quarterback entering 2021. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very iffy on it. I'm a little higher on Teddy Bridgewater than a lot of people are. And I think it's kind of an equal move. I know the ceiling for Darnold in theory is higher. I just don't know how much of Sam Darnold with Adam Gase, is the issue the, the thing that scares me the most with Darnold is the turnovers, more interceptions in game played. I don't know how much of that is on Gase, how much that's on Darnold. I, I am excited to see him in that Matt Rule offense because I mean he he comes from that Big Twelve offensive minded area. Uh, so so we'll, we'll see how that works out for them. Um, it, it's it's an interesting move. And it kind of tells you what the quarterback class is this year because the Panthers are sitting eight. And if they're at eight, not thinking they can get one of the top five guys, that's maybe a little telling for what the class is. Um, In terms of what this does for the 49ers, do you think this move officially takes Zach Wilson off the board? I think it does. And I think it's not really a, a good, a well-kept secret. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, we're at the we're at the point where everybody's overanalyzing. Everybody's going for clicks. Nobody really knows what's going on. But this one, you got to kind of feel really certain about like about 95, 97 yeah. percent sure that it's going to be Zach Wilson. And again, this is why you get to three, because if it's not Zach Wilson, let's say it's Justin Fields, then guess what? Zach Wilson just fell into your lap and now you get to get him at three. This is a beautiful spot to be in. And you know what? I think it's more it's it's more certain now than it ever was that that it is going to be Zach Wilson. Take what Steve Young said about courting their family, you know, and I think something about buying a house and stuff like that out there. So it just, you know, again, when people are trying to tell you about, you know, what they're hearing and stuff like that, 
it's just all nonsense at this point, and it's really just to generate clicks because there's nothing really to talk about. It's just going to be a long, how many more days? 24 more days. Good gosh. Oh, yeah, 24 days. We're om- Hey, you know what, Jason? We're almost there, though. We're almost there. Yep. Um, can I share my conspiracy theory that I don't really believe in, but I, it's just kind of a interesting timing thing? I, I shared it on the clubhouse today. Okay. Uh, and I want to preface this by saying that I don't even necessarily, if I, I, I don't even think I agree with this. Um, it's just, this is more of a th- critical thinking uh, exercise. Uh, Matt Mayoko yesterday, or was it yesterday or Saturday? One of the two days uh, tweeted out about how he wouldn't, he said it was a surprise that the Niners traded to the three, but he wouldn't be that surprised if the Niners traded up to two. Which kind of came out of nowhere. Like that that thought nobody was ever talking about the Niners trading up to two until Mayoko said that on mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday, whatever day it was. W- mm-hmm. Weekends are just one day at this point. Um the timing to me is just very coincidental that literally the next day the the, the Jets open up their quarterback position, presumably for Zach Wilson, but what if there's something to the Niners trading up to two? Maybe, I don't know, a pick swap uh, with the Jets. You send a quarterback the 49ers currently have on the roster. And and, and I know the, the, it's wild. It's, this is a wild take, but just bear with me. Um, you send Garoppolo and maybe another pick later round or next year to the Jets. The Jets get their quarterback. And you got to remember, who is their head coach and offensive coordinator? Guys that came from the 49ers. Now the Niners can move up the two. If they still want to take Justin Fields, that's okay because now you're taking Justin Fields away from the Jets. You're essentially guaranteeing yourself to get the guy you want, whether it's Wilson, whether it's Fields. I don't know. It's a thought that crossed my mind. I don't even think I believe it, but th- that wh- what kind of podcast would we be if I didn't just recklessly throw ideas out there, Jason? I mean, what well, what the hell is everybody always yelling at us, at us about if we're not going to say crazy stuff, right? I we're know, a bunch right? of podcasters, so it's time to just get crazy. Let's get nuts. Um, no, I mean, I don't know. That's a good. It's a good theory, and it's honestly something that might, you know, be, you know, I just I have a tough time with, uh, you know, him going to the Jets. It's either for me if it does happen, Washington, Denver, Chicago. I don't know. You know, it, it's I don't know. It is not it, the the places that he can go at this point are starting to shrink. New England. Yes. It's really just starting to get really tight now, like where you're going to move him. So, again, you know, I think we discussed it. You know, if you if you run into the year with Jimmy and let's say he starts to ball out and you drafted Justin Fields, then you trade him at the deadline to a team who might be a quarterback away or something like that. But the problem is, is if he goes out there, he gets injured again or doesn't play well. Now yeah. you get nothing. So they've got an interesting, interesting decision to make uh, in terms of Garoppolo. Now, do you, you rip the Band-Aid off now and get what you can because his value is probably at his highest right now because he's still, you know, he hasn't been injured this year or anything like that? Yeah. Or do you run that risk? And I don't know if you can run that risk. Yeah, and, and as I said, I don't even think I believe my own conspiracy theory that I formed. Uh, there's just, like, just enough, like, loose ends to tie that all together with my Oko's tweet with the current Jets brass being former 49ers, uh, things like that. It, like kind of think of it as a, what was it, 2017 when the Niners were never taking Mitch Trubisky, but the Bears traded up one spot to make sure they got Mitch Trubisky, uh, something like that. That That's kind of my thought. It's my crazy thought that I don't even agree with. I don't know, just, just enough pieces tied together. I still I, I think the Niners stay at three. There's there's no point in, in in moving up at this point because the Niners are in a very good spot. Because I think you are fine with either Justin Fields or Zach Wilson or Trevor Lawrence if he's somehow there at three. Um he's not gonna be there at three. No. Um but you essentially make the Jets make the choice. Yeah. And if you get you know, you get quote unquote stuck with fields, you don't get stuck with fields because fields is a top prospect. You you get your guy. If the Jets get wild and go fields over Wilson, you get Zach Wilson. So it's really a win-win situation for the 49ers unless they take Mac Jones. We won't say that out loud on this podcast. Um, but yeah, that, that's my thing. Three, I think, is the perfect spot. Unless you want to get really wild and ensure you get the guy you want, then you trade up the two. But I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think so either. I just, you know, again, people are grasping at straws at this point. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for Matt Miyoko and what he's done. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, talk about him that way. I'm talking about just everybody in general. 
you know, yes. right now this is a slow time. People are trying to, you know, generate content. It's tough for us, right? Like we, we, you and I, even when we, when we spit all these shows, we're like, man, what are we going to talk about? We can't talk about quarterbacks again. Right. So no. if it's a tough time for us, it's a tough time for everybody when it comes to this stuff. So, you know, and there's always going to be over analyzation and things like that. And, and that's what's happening right now more than anything. So it's it's the, the advice that I have for people. If it's getting too much and it's too annoying because last week it was Mac, it was going to start with Zach this week. Next, next week it'll be Trey. Just unplug a little bit, honestly. Just, you know, just stop reading stuff, you know, because you're going to get, you know, Dan Patrick's sources – tell him this, this, and this. Dan Patrick doesn't have sources. They're not telling him anything, you know? And, and I'm, again, that's someone who's respected. He doesn't know. Only three people know. He's not one of them. So that's why you have to stop listening to everybody else. Yeah, and, and you got to realize that the last concrete thing we had happen was, was it last Thursday when the pro days were? Whatever day pro days were, right? Tuesday, Thursday, whatever day it was. That was the last concrete thing we had, and that was – five, six days ago at this point. So now we get these, you know, networks, these um, Twitter timelines, these profiles that they have to fill content. They have to float these ideas out there. That's, that's where these Mac Jones things come from. That's where the Justin Fields, that's where the Trey Lance comes from. It's people speculating. Once again, I feel like a broken record. I say this a lot. Nothing means nothing. And everything means everything at this point. Don't, don't the Mac Jones smoke is there, but also the Justin Fields smoke is there. A lot of the, you know, like this, let's just be realistic about this, right? A lot of t conversation the past week has been about Justin Fields work ethic, right? Is that kind of where I'm at? His, his ethic, his commitment uh. to football, things like that. And what people need to realize is odds are, and, and I was going to use this example earlier today, odds are the people leaking that stuff is probably the Carolina Panthers, which they that that example is dead now because the Panthers have their quarterback. Uh, it, it, it's it's the teams further back in the top ten that want their guy to drop to them, so they're the ones you know dropping this information. Hey, you know Justin Fields, he he he. We don't know if he actually likes football, but we like him enough. You know, so it that's what that is. So it, it's it's disgusting. It's weird. I hate it. I hate it. But that's just what it is, is. Everything's about positioning at this point. And when a player, something bad about a player comes out, like, hey, work ethic, more often than not, it might be a team trying to take his value. Same thing with teams overhyping him, you know, trying to raise it. It's everything's push and pull at this point. Don't believe anything you read until it happens. That's my PSA that I've said every week for the past five weeks now. I mean, I don't know what else needs to be said there, honestly. I mean, I can't really add anything else to that. But yes, absolutely. I mean, I it's just, again, again, everybody's just trying to fill content at this point. So, you know, and it happens every year, too. It's not like it's just this year. So I'm not trying to make it seem like, you know, whatever. This is the one year that it's happening. It happens every single year. You can go back and look at all of the articles right before. You know, remember... Quinn Williams was the pick instead of Nick Bosa. Remember those mm. days? Good days. Nice days when that when that was going on. Quinn Williams got taken to IHOP and, and that was it. All of a sudden now he's the pick. Just relax, guys. Settle in. Mm. We got we got days going. So relax. I want the 49. That'd be you know cool. That would be like just get a text. Kyle Shannon and John Lynch. Hey, you want to go to IHOP? Mm -hmm. I yeah. would love that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, I wanted to say about Justin Fields' work ethic is, is yes. J JT O'Sullivan, man, if you guys aren't tapped into to QB school, whoo, man, that was YouTube a YouTube channel. Let's talk about that. JT. That was a scathing, yeah. scathing segment. Uh, after Dan Orlowski comes out and says that about work ethic, he starts talking about, yeah, you know, he went to the OSU, you know, directors and all of those guys, and they believed that he couldn't play play with crack ribs, but yeah, he definitely doesn't want to play. Also is the reason that there was Big Ten football, but yeah, I don't know if he wants it. I don't know if he has the work ethic. You see how stupid that sounds? You see how dumb anything like that sounds? Because everything in front of you shows you that that's not true. Hurts his knee in the Michigan game, comes right back in the next play and throws a dime. The yeah. kid wants it. He's tough. This is literally the dumbest thing that you could ever hear, and it becomes almost repetitive when it comes to players like him let's just say it, black quarterbacks, the same exact thing every single year. It's always the same three criticisms. One read, don't know if he wants it, character concerns. Don't understand it. I don't understand it. I never I never have understood it. And now even this year, it's more frustrating than ever because it couldn't be farther from the truth when it comes to Justin Fields. No, not at all. And also real quick, little, JT O'Sullivan, the QB school, that's his YouTube channel. Dude puts out fire. Yep. Um, he, is, he is a great – listen, if you guys want to learn about the quarterback position – 
he's the guy to watch. Um, I, I see a lot of people too, and his videos come up. He's like, well, how good, how much does he know? He wasn't a good NFL. He's still, he's, his brain is an NFL level brain. That's all that matters. Um, and, and, and if you want to learn things about the NFL, man, JT O'Sullivan, his YouTube page, fantastic. For sure. Fantastic. And, for sure. And, and, and I think that's another thing too, right? Because let's just be frank. JT O'Sullivan didn't really have success at this level, but that doesn't mean that you don't understand how to play the position. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's what I really learned about it. You know, you can make all the jokes that you want about him mm -hmm. being drafted and not, you know, but the man is smart. He understands the reads. He understands the concepts and he knows how to go through it. So he was, he was fed up. At the end of it, he was fed up by it, and he was just like – it was a great thing. I implore anybody who hasn't listened yes. to him talk about Justin Fields. It was right after the Dan Ovlosky comments. Um, if, if you haven't, please do. Please do. More often than not, NFL guys have elite brains. More often than not. Sometimes the physical doesn't catch up to it, and that's what happens. It happens. I mean – shoot man like that. i'm the same way i'm my brain works a lot faster than my body and it just doesn't work out sometimes and that's that's kind of what it is is all these guys know what they're talking about all these guys know what they're saying it just sometimes doesn't doesn't work physically but jt o'sullivan 100 percent like highly recommend his youtube channel uh you know another youtube channel i highly recommend jason aponte's youtube channel so if you've actually just stumbled on for the first time and you're like hey this guy's pretty cool uh click sub subscribe on this channel uh get 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 uh get jason some subscribers you see how i did that seamlessly to plug that my nice. friend jason aponte do you have any final thoughts today no, uh man who how do we, how do we get here how Andrew? do we get how here do, how do we get here man how did how did how did two guys you and i how do we get a player interview how do we get here man i uh, it, it's crazy man i i i I've been wanting to post the, 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 oh, what's it? Paul Rudd meme. The, the, like, look at us. Who would have thought? Look at us. Because, like, thought? as I said, man, like, I know we do this every so often, but, um, man, it's, it's crazy that you and I were just two dudes that met on Twitter. Yep. Um, and, and this, this, this little, like, it was, it's funny because it was kind of a side project for you and I. We, we had a million different things going on. And now all of a sudden, this is, this is what we have. This is our little corner of the internet, and we love it. And uh, man, kind of same thing. We always say none of it's possible without the people in the comments, uh, people responding to our tweets, people responding to our messages, all that fun stuff. Um, and we had Jaquaski Tart on the pod today. That's um, whew, that's that's something. Do you want to make some more announcements real quick before we go? Oh, look, we have a donation real quick. Hey, oh, wow. John, 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 thank you very much. Thank you. You've, thank hey, you. John, you've been here since day one. Yes. You've been here since day one. We we love yes. and appreciate you. Yeah. Um, what thank you, buddy. Do, do we do we want to like put it out there concrete? So yes. Yeah, so this week we're this gonna week. be doing two two more shows this week. Two more shows, guys. Two more. Who we've got? We've got Al Sacco from 49ers Web Zone coming on and Guy Haberman of the Haberman and Middle Call podcast. He's going to come on and talk ball with us as well, too. We're just trying to iron out the details. But that's what we have lined up this week. So the content is going to continue. And talking about draft day, I'll be in Cleveland. Be in Cleveland. I'm going to be broadcasting there. I'll be in the building in day two. So we'll be there. And um, also, what was the other thing? Oh, yes. And I will be covering the UAB Pro Day. Um, I got credentialed for it. So I will be able to uh, to do that. I'll be able to ask Austin Watkins uh, some questions. I wrote an article about him also on 49ers Goldmine. So that's we're working. That's it. We're working over here. That's it. That's really um, it. Symmetry, thank you, man. I appreciate the donation, bro. Really appreciate you appreciate tuning in it. as well, too, man. Uh, yeah. And then also the, the, the reason Jason is trying to find a place to record during the draft is the pencil in plan right now is we're going to do a live show. Uh, first round of the draft. Uh, we're, we're just going to talk through it. Hey, hey, I was telling you when the Niners made the trade, our job's a little easier now. The Niners get their pick out of the way early. We can have a fun night. We'll take a ton of questions from you guys. Uh, we're really excited for it. Uh, it's something that, oh man, I think back in October, I texted you. I was like, hey man, draft, we should do a live show for the first round. Yeah. Um, and and so we're, we're looking forward to it. Hey, it's all coming to a head. I got good news for everybody too. As stressful as it is that the the draft, you know, all this draft talk, the drafts at the end of this month, you flip that calendar to May and then you flip it to June. All of a sudden, it's it's getting to football time. June is when all the practices start. Francisco, we appreciate it. Uh, we we really appreciate the donation. Thank you, Francisco. Um, thank you. Um, appreciate but, you, man. But yeah, so so guys, listen, we got three more weeks of draft talk. We got three more weeks of it. 
we get this done. We stop talking in hyperbole. We stop talking in hypotheticals. We start talking more concrete what this roster is going to start looking like. Uh, and hey, man, we we should get a schedule announcement here soon. So that should be a fun episode too. So hey, we're gonna have content coming up here soon. Um, Jason, I as I said, man, I I don't think I've said it on the stream. I love you. And, I love you, buddy. Uh, how far this 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 ride has come, it's been amazing. Uh, yeah. And we appreciate each and every one of you, Jason Aponte, as always. Let's go Niners. Let's go Niners.